Today, the goal is to learn some basic Linux. What I'm gonna be using to learn basic Linux is a website called Over the Wire, or Bandit Over the Wire, to be a little bit more specific. Um, so last time we did a little bit of Hack the Box. A couple times before that, we did a little bit of Try Hack Me. Uh, we're gonna be using one more site. I like kind of shuffling the sites around because you know different learners like learning using different platforms. Um, so we're gonna be using today a website called Bandit Over the Wire. Um, so this is an awesome free resource. Uh, it's a little old school in kind of how it's like formatted, uh, but it is pretty, pretty cool. Basically what it is, is it's increasingly difficult challenges uh, for learning Linux, right? So if you're a beginner to Linux, this is a pretty good way to get jump started into it, right? Now, a couple requirements for you to be able to use this at all, right? For you to be able to like get any benefit from um, this tool. Uh, you're going to need an actual machine that could run Linux, right? Whether it's a Windows machine that is connecting to a Linux terminal somehow, or if you just have a Linux machine, right? You're, you're going to need some way to be able to SSH in, right? Um, for Windows machines, you could use a tool called PuTTY, right? I know that's one way that people will SSH into machines using Windows. Uh, but for my Mac users out there, or for my rare Linux users out there, um, SSHing in, uh, should be intuitive just on your terminal. You should be able to do that natively, which is pretty good. Um, so what we're going to be doing for this one is we're going to start with level one. Now, the way it works with Bandit Over the Wire is every challenge or every pro uh, problem that you go through, you need to SSH into a machine and solve the challenge in it. Um, now, when we say SSH, right, like what, what do we mean? Um, SSH, it stands for Secure Shell. And all we're doing is we're connecting our computer, right? You see my computer here, to some remote computer way out in the ether, right? I'm just sending a connection. I'm using one of their computers, you know, on their premises or wherever they have it. And that's where I'm solving the challenges. Why are we doing that? Well, because they have all of these machines set up uh, with the problems preloaded, right? So basically all I'm doing is I'm taking my machine I'm using a command called SSH and I'm connecting it there, right? So once again, if you have Mac, right, all you have to do is open up your terminal. It'll look somewhat similar to this, a little bit different. Uh, I'm using a Linux virtual machine, right? I, I love doing that on my Windows machine. Um, you could also use PuTTY on Windows or a program called PuTTY on Windows uh, to do this. So let's start with level zero. Level zero here, we can see the goal is to log into the game. Right, and that may sound easy, but if you are absolutely new to Linux, this could actually be maybe one of the more challenging parts to be completely honest with you. So the goal is to SSH in. Uh, we need to connect to bandit.labs.overthewire.org uh, on port 220. And we have a username and a password to log in using. Now, funny enough, I know this is level zero. This is probably going to be more difficult for you as a beginner than level one, two, and probably even three. The reason for that is we're going to need to know a little bit about this command SSH. Um, one of the cool things about Bandit Over the Wire is not only does it give us the problems here, it also gives us some resources, right? So if I click here, right on SSH, I just right click and opened a new tab. It'll give me the manual page to teach us how to use this command, right? Every problem will say commands that we may need to solve the level. A lot of times problems don't need all of the commands, right? But a lot of times they need at least a couple of them. So in this case, we absolutely need this SSH command. And this is a lot of reading, but the purpose of me showing you this live is, you know, hopefully to save you some reading. And uh, let's do it. So the first thing we need to do to use the SSH command is type in SSH. Now, my terminal has an autocomplete, so I'm spoiling the answer already. Um, your terminal may not have this, um, but step one is type in SSH. Step two is going to be use the username they gave us, right? So I'm going to do bandit zero. I'm going to do bandit zero, right? So I'm now saying I want to connect using the username bandit zero. The next thing I have to say is, okay, you, you specified the username, or excuse me, specified the username you want to use. What machine do you want to connect to with that username? What I'm going to do to denote that is I'm going to use an at sign, and I'm going to do bandit.labs.overthewire.org. 
Okay. We did a lot here. How do I know that I'm correct so far? Basically, what we have been given for level zero is I have the username I need to sign into and I have the machine on which that username exists or the computer. Think of this as a computer, right? So all I've done so far, let's, I'm gonna put the letter T just to get rid of that autocorrect and not throw us off. All I've done so, so far is I've typed in the SSH command. I said, okay, I want to connect using the user bandit zero. I used an at sign. So I'm saying I'm connecting bandit zero at, and then I gave the name of the computer with which I am connecting to, which in this case, as is given here, bandit.labs.overthewire.org. Once again, I promise this is going to be much more difficult to learn than level one, two, and three. Next up, what I need to do is I need to specify a port number. If you do not specify a port number, it's going to assume that you want to connect on port 22, which in most cases for you will probably be correct. Unfortunately, for Bandit Over the Wire, that's not correct, right? When I hit enter and I try to connect on the default port, which is 22, because I didn't specify a port, it's going to tell me you are trying to log into this SSH server on port 22. This is not intended. Um, you might be wondering, why don't they want me to log in on port 22? It's probably because that's the port they use for development purposes, right? And they're, they're trying to separate these two things out. But let's take it back a step. I'm going to type in clear. I'm going to hit the up arrow key twice to regain my uh, command or where we're currently at. And I'm going to show you the fix. So we have SSH, the username, and which computer we are trying to talk to. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to do dash P for port, and then I'm gonna give the port number they want me to connect to, which is 2220, and hit enter. I have now properly sent out a connection request to this machine, and it's now asking me to authorize myself. It's saying, okay, you wanna sign in as bandit zero on this machine, give me the password. How do I know that I should trust you? And we could see that for level zero, the password is bandit zero again. So I'm just gonna type in bandit zero and hit enter. And give it a little bit of time to cook. Uh, I suck at typing, let me try again. Bandit zero, enter. And now we are in. How did I know that worked? Well, my terminal spit out a bunch of stuff at me that I'm not gonna read, because reading takes a while. But the quicker way to know that this worked is I could see my terminal has changed. Before, I don't know if you've noticed, it said Cali at Cali. Now I am bandit zero at bandit, right? I'm gonna type in the clear command just so that I can clear out my console, right? This command will clear off everything on your screen and make it a little bit cleaner for you. I'm gonna type it just for the pedagogical purpose of not cluttering the screen too much as we go. So we have now officially uh, basically completed level zero, right? So congratulations. Now, if you click on level zero to one, we have our first real challenge. Our first challenge was to log into the server, which is a challenge. This is going to be our first problem that we have to figure out and kind of use our heads a little bit on. So the problem is the password for the next level is stored in a file called readme. This is located in the home directory. Use this password to log into bandit one using SSH. Whenever you find a password for a level, use SSH, right, which is what we did before, to log into that level and continue the game. My challenge right now is to find a file, right? Keep in mind, right now, I'm not on my machine. I'm actually on somebody else's machine. I'm on the machine called Bandit, right? That means that the files that I used to have are no longer there, right? These are now a whole new set of files because I'm on a whole new machine, right? That's all we've done with that previous challenge. So now just to show you kind of like the lookup process so that you all can, you know, one day fly on your own with this, I'm going to type in, or actually, let's see. Yeah, I'll just type in how to view files in Linux, right? That's what we want to do. We want to find the files on this machine. Okay, so this is saying how to view it using cat. Um, that's actually not what we're looking for. Let's change this to display. Uh, let's do how to list files in Linux. Okay, so we now see something called the ls command, right? So for bandit over the wire, there's going to be a couple ways to get the information you want. First way is going to be by Googling it. That's a pretty good way. 
Um, the shorter way is actually by clicking on these commands that they give us. I can tell you for this level, you really only need two of these commands. You don't need all of them, right? We're going to start with ls, which stands for list. And then we're going to use a cat command. But let's start with ls, right? Our first challenge, right, is we need to view the contents of the computer we just logged into. So I'm going to type in ls and hit enter. I see that there is something called readme. The question is, how do I read this file? That's where the cat command comes in, right? So we've just learned the ls command. We learned that we can list contents using that. Now I'm going to use the cat command, right? We could read this real quick and see what it does, to concatenate files and print them on standard output. All I need to do is I'm going to use the file I just found out about, and I'm going to do cat and then readme and hit enter. We now have this like jumble of text that looks kind of weird. This is actually our password for the next level. We've just completed another level of Bandit Over the Wire, right? So before we completed the first level by SSHing, this level we completed by doing the ls command, which listed all of the files in the computer, or excuse me, all of the files in the current directory of the computer we're in. And then we use the cat command to actually spit out the contents of readme. The best way to think about what we did in terms of what you're probably used to is think about if you had a Microsoft Word file or if you're a Mac user, a pages file, right? All we've basically done in the terminal without clicking anything, just using our, basically our keyboard, right? In some commands, we've just taken a file called readme. Let's call it a Word document. We've taken a Word document called readme and we basically double clicked it and read the text within it. We did that using the two commands ls and the command cat, right? So that's level one or excuse me, level 021. I'm going to copy this and I'm going to type exit. By typing exit, what I've now done, and you're probably going to notice this change, right? Is I've actually killed my connection with that other computer named Bandit Zero, right? I've now, or excuse me, that other computer named Bandit. That connection is now dead. And as you can see, I'm back to my original computer, which is Kali at Kali. What we need to do to move to the next level we can actually see here, we need to use the password we just got and SSH back in. But instead of SSHing to Bandit Zero, we're going to SSH using a different username. This is how they separate the levels out for us. What I'm actually going to do to make sure I don't lose these passwords, just in case we have to go back, I'm going to do touch, which is going to create a password file. You don't have to do this. This is just for my own organization. You can paste it in a notepad. You can paste it wherever you want. I'm going to do uh, touch uh, Bandit over the wire passwords. I'm now going to put this output. So I'm going to do cat uh, do, 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 or let's do echo the password level one. I'm going to put that into my file. Okay. To explain what I just did, you don't have to do this. This is like the more techie way of doing it. I've just created a file using a touch command, right? And I've just used this echo command to uh, basically yell this output into a file, right? Like I like to think of the echo command as it's just like it's moving output from one place to another, whether it's to your console here, right? Your terminal here, or if it's moving it to, in this case, a file. Feel free to ignore these two steps. I'm just doing it so if we have to go back, we can find it. All you need to do is just paste the, the passwords we find in any regular text file that you're used to. Uh, we'll go back over these commands later on because this is a little bit more on the complicated side. Now what I'm going to do to log into the next level, I'm going to click on this level one to two because that's where we are now. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to hit the up arrow key a couple times to get our SSH command back up. I'm still currently on my machine. What I want to do now is I want to connect to that other machine named Bandit. The only change we have to make to this command that we've used previously is instead of logging in as bandit zero, I'm going to log in as bandit one. So I SSH bandit one. I'm going to take the password we found before, paste it, hit enter. And keep in mind, when you paste it, it's actually not going to show any output. I'll, I'll demo that one more time just so you all see that. When I paste stuff, you see how it says password here? If I paste stuff, and if, even if I type stuff, it actually will not pop up. That's just so it could protect your password for when you're screen sharing. It's just how the terminal works. 
Um, just keep in mind when you paste, it is there. It is actually there. Um, and that will be the source of many frustrations when it comes to incorrect passwords. You won't actually be able to see what you're typing incorrectly, which kind of, it's a little annoying sometimes. I've now, I'm going to clear out. I'm now properly logged into level one. I can tell because instead of bandit zero, it says bandit one at our bandit machine. Now let's see what level one wants us to do. Okay. It says the password for the next uh, level is stored in a file called dash. And this is located in the home directory. This level seems awfully familiar or awfully similar to the last level. There's only an, a little bit of an added challenge to it. Let's go back to it, level one to two. I'm gonna do the same command I started with before, ls. This is gonna list all of the files in my directory and we can see the file I'm, I'm meant to read out, right? Now, remember, what command do we have to use in the last problem? We had to use the cat command, right? That's the command we use to read these files contents. So I'm gonna try cat dash and I'm actually gonna hit an, an issue here. I'm gonna run into a problem. When I hit enter, Seems like it just kind of breaks. Nothing really happens, right? I'm gonna hit enter a couple more times. Seems like for whatever reason, the cat command isn't working anymore. If this happens to you where it seems like your command is like stalling out, do control C and that'll kill it, right? And we now have our terminal back. So we can see right here, I have my terminal once again. Let me clear my screen. I'm gonna explain what went wrong. In Linux, there are things called special characters. This dash is considered a special character. So unlike the last file we tried to read, which was all letters, and it was just named readme, we're now trying to read a file that is named after a special character. Now, this leads us to have an issue. We need to be able to tell the machine that we're speaking to, which is the bandit machine, that we want to read this file and ignore the fact that the name is a special character. So I'm gonna go to handy dandy Google, Right, I'm gonna do how to read a file named, and I'm just gonna put that dash, right? I wanna show you all the Google research process to do it. Right, so this looks pretty good. How to open a dash file name using terminal. Let's look, select this. And if you do some quick review, let me zoom in a little bit. You could see that we could either use this less than symbol and then have the dash, or we could do dot forward slash dash. So let's start, start with dot forward slash. This is the one I'm actually more familiar with. So let's do dot forward slash and then the, the weird special character that we want to read. Okay, that worked. Let's try the other one. Let's take out dot forward slash. Let's use the less than sign and hit enter. Cool. So we have now just used two different methods to read this unorthodoxly named file or this file named in an unorthodox way. Once again, I'm going to save this password. I'm going to exit. I'm going to echo this output level two to my passwords file, right? You don't have to remember, you don't have to follow this, uh, these steps. This is just for my own rec record keeping, right? You could basically just put this password anywhere you want, right? Put it in a notepad, put it on a, like, you could even write it down with pen and paper. You know, I know we're doing, I know we're doing some tech, but you know, you could always whip out the old pen and paper. I'm going to clear my screen and I'm going to get my SSH command back up, right? We just finished level one, right? We're now on level two, right? So we're on level two to three. Um, in order to log on, all I have to change with our previous SSH command is I'm going to change it from bandit one to uh, bandit two. I'm going to hit enter and I'm going to use the password that we had from before. It's still on my clipboard, right? This is why we have to save it just in case you lose it. And I'm signed into Bandit 2 right now. I'm going to clear my screen once again. Clear it all out so it looks pretty clean for you guys. And we're going to read the next problem. So, we have Bandit level 2 to 3. For this one, it says the password for the next level is stored in a file called spaces in this file name. Uh, this is located in the home directory. Once again, the steps for this is the same as the first two problems. The only thing we're going to change is how we cat the file. So step number one is see the files we have. I'm gonna do ls. So we have a file called spaces in this file name. This is actually all one file, even though there's spaces. The problem we have with reading this file just by typing it out is that because of the fact that there's spaces, this cat command is gonna to try to read each of these words as if they were individual files instead of it as a whole. So when I hit enter, 
And it's going to say, okay, no such file named spaces, no such file named in, no such file named this, no such file named file name. What I need to tell our computer is that spaces in this file name is actually the name of one file, right? It's not four different files, each named with those words. It's actually one file, and this was just improperly named. Um, this is also a little bit of a PSA as to why <laughs> you should probably name things intelligently when you're putting them in Linux systems. The solution to this is actually going to be a little bit easier than the last one, in my opinion. All you have to do is do cat quotations spaces in this file name and quotations. By adding the quotes here, we're telling our Linux machine that we want to read this, these four words as one file name, not four different ones, but as one complete file name. So when I hit enter, we get our flag. There's also a weird way to do this with slashes. I forget how to do it. Um, let's see if I could remember. I'm going to do spaces. Uh, let's do backslash in this file name, I think it is. Mm, let's see. Let me see. I'm trying to remember how to do it the other way. Let's do this is what Google's for. How to uh, cat files with multiple words in them uh, da, da, da. how to cap files with Ooh, I kind of put that bad let's do spaces in them all right this is why effective googling matters okay so that guy did it the same way I did it let's see what's the weird way okay this is the weird way yeah so what you could also do is you could just use these backslashes Let's see, um, I actually put them at the front. They're supposed to be at the end, right? So this is gonna be the second way of doing it. I personally find the quotations easier to remember as you could obviously see by the fact that I forgot this. Um, but you know, there's gonna be use cases for everything here. All right, so let's try this one out. All right, so we have cat spaces in this file name. If you throw the slash at the end of the file name, it's actually gonna give you an error. So you have to make sure to leave this off, All right? But here we are. Right, so we see there's always going to be, or not always, but usually going to be a couple different ways to answer these problems. All right, so we just went through the first, technically four, right? We went through zero, one, two, three. Um, so four if you count the zero. Um, so as always, thank you all for watching, and I'll see you all in the next video.